Hello, hello. It is Sarah Waggle, astrologer and leadership coach here for this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. So as we dive into this, um, I'm going to do, the, I'll go into the keynote presentation and then I'll be back here for your sun and rising signs and Oracle. Um, <clears throat> and I just want to say, get really real with yourself. This is a really interesting time for each of us. Um, Libra, of course, is ruled by Venus. Venus is currently exalted in Pisces. So we really have this opportunity to create. We have an opportunity to step into authenticity with Pluto and Aquarius um, and all sorts of other things. We also have a hefty amount of energy still in Pisces, even though we're in Aries season. Um, and so it's really an opportunity to feel through your shadow side right? This is an eclipse. This is a lunar eclipse. It will not be visible in the United States. I believe it's visible in Eastern Europe, Asia, something like that. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to kind of be the breakup with your victimhood kind of coach in this video. And so um, I really invite you and encourage you to see what you need to see within yourself in this video and in this forecast. And as we step into this lunar eclipse, um, I think that we all kind of have an ugly monster called our ego. It's a child throwing a temper tantrum sometimes in our head. And we really need to address the, the evil monster and at least acknowledge its existence because we all have a shadow side. We all have you know, the, the good angel on one side and the devil angel on the other side. And it's okay that you have this shadowy side. This is what I've been encouraging throughout this year. Um, and even before this year is to really know yourself thoroughly. And so as we move through this lunar eclipse, please, um, understand that what I say, I say from love and compassion, and I've probably been there. <laughs> through whatever it is. Um, so anyway, let's step into the presentation. And then, like I said, I will be back for the sun and rising signs. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the things. I appreciate you. I love that this channel is doing magical things. Um, of course, you can check out the new uh, Admiral Sarah Chronicles, um, where I am bringing um, sci nonfiction to like the spiritual work that we do, whether it's astrology, emotional intelligence, uh, you know, deconditioning, deprogramming humanity, like whatever it is. Um, I'm kind of having some fun with that series. So I hope you're enjoying it too. Um, trying to post those videos every Wednesday, no matter what. And uh, it's kind of more casual me, which you get my color lights, you get all of the fun parts of me. So I hope you're enjoying that. I also have another series that's going to be airing very shortly. And uh, so I'm excited to bring that to you as well. So Thanks for everything, and I will see you after the presentation. Welcome to this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. This is going to peak on March 25th in the middle of the night, 2024. This is a penumbral lunar eclipse, and we'll get more into that in the presentation. Um, but this being in Libra, we're obviously dealing with relationships. We are obviously dealing with balance and the opposing sun in Aries is the I am component. So it's a lot about how we show up in relationships, whether that's with our job, with our partner, with our friends, with our colleagues, etc. So let's get into the presentation.
Here is the energetic overview. Similar to when we began Pisces season, we still had heavy Aquarius energy. We enter this airy season with a good amount of Piscean energy, indicative of the fact that there are major endings and major beginnings on the horizon. This full moon energy is confrontational. It's having us face our ugly monster, our shadowy side. It's really asking us to not only face it, see it, look at it, but accept it as part of who you are because we all have a shadow side. And so this, the way this eclipse is working is it's having us really see that and give that shadow side space to show itself um, so that we can kind of be with it, love it, all of those things. Be compassionate towards it, forgive it, allow it the space to heal, um, those sorts of things. Um, the resistant part of this feels like when you're pulling back on a bow and arrow and it gets to that point where it feels really, really resistant, that's that's kind of where this full moon is, right? It, it feels really heavy. It feels really you know, just tough, like you're pulling back on a bow, getting ready to fire your arrow. And so, um, and then of course, on the flip side, we'll be able to launch our arrow forward when we get into the new moon, lunar or the solar eclipse in April and other transits in April. Of course, relationships are the focus because this is a Libra full moon. Who are you with? Um, who calls you out on your shit? <laughs> Um, and, and, and then lovingly supports you through it. So personally, I like friends who actually do call me out on my mistakes or my faults, and it gives me that chance to face it and be with it and improve on myself rather than people who just, oh, you're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, and there's nothing wrong, inherently wrong, but what I mean is like, they don't acknowledge that, you know, you're fallible, right? Even if you have like the best partner in the world or the best friend in the world, you're like, yeah, but she has no tact or she has this or she has that. Like they can see the the shortcomings and that's okay, right? That's part of being human. It's part of who we are. But I, for one, like to surround myself with people who actually do support me and want me to get better versus people who allow me to stick in my victim, icky bullshit story. <laughs> so, um, so it could be this opportunity to really see what relationships actually serve, support, and challenge you to do better and which relationships sort of allow you to stay in that toxic bond um, that keep you swimming in the same uh, you know, repeating the same cycle over and over, the definition of insanity, right? And maybe you're seeing that in relationships, like they're repeating the same cycle over and over and over, and you've kind of had enough. Um, and so this is kind of bringing that into perspective. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say prepare for communication or... Um, travel interruptions. I think there could be any kind of anything to be prepared for. And I, I say this in a way to not fear monger, but to encourage you to have a plan in place for when, you know, technology goes down. We've seen multiple outages of various technology over the last month, month and a half. And we may continue to see that, particularly once we get into mid-May and beyond. And so I think it's a good idea to just in general, even if there weren't wacky transits and the sun weren't doing wacky things and the planet, the planet wasn't doing wacky things, I think it's important to have a, a plan in place in case, you know, you need support from people around you, your neighbors, um, your family, however that aligns for you um, to have a plan in place. <clears throat> Um, and as I said, drastic endings, uh, and launching beginnings. I think this is just, you know, we'll see when we look at the chart, you'll see the shape of this. It's really unique in that, you know, we've got loads of planets in Pisces 
and lots of stuff going on in Aries. And Pisces is the 12th sign of the Zodiac. Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. So that's just where we are. So that's the energetic overview for this lunar eclipse. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the transits um, that we got coming up. April is a big, huge month, okay? You're going to want to be on your adaptability game. You're going to want to be on your flexibility game. You're going to want to go with the flow. You're going to want to um, have your spiritual practices, your meditation, journaling, grounding, feeling into your body, staying centered. You're going to want to have those things on board in your routines, practicing, you know, daily, weekly, all the things. Okay. So of course, April 1st through the 25th, been talking about this for a while, Mercury retrograde. It's already in its pre-retrograde shadow. So we're already kind of feeling the effects of it. And it's going to pass the North Node in Aries and Chiron in Aries a few times during this, you know, retrograde situation. So it's really going to kind of act like that messenger sending you the message of where you're going to, where, you know, where you're kind of being guided to go. And it's also going to have us practicing direct communication. However, a retrograde does mean communication hiccups, communication, you know, mishaps, typos, things like that. Um, whatnot. This also could be like, you know, because of the eclipses we got going on and we got a lot of like old stuff coming up. Maybe this is an opportunity for, to forgive yourself for like, you know, I don't know, texting while you're drunk or whatever, <laughs> like just a thought. <laughs> um, and then, okay. March 22nd through, uh, April 30th is Mars and Pisces. I like this for some reason. Um, Mars is not as strong here, but I feel like with Mars and Pisces, Mars rules Aries. I feel like with Mars and Pisces and Mercury retrograde in Aries is going to kind of slow things down a bit. Cause really we have like, this is the first fire sign since like mid December of 2023. So I feel like these two, while they're going to cause like a level of chaos or not really chaos, but like a level of damn what the hell kind of moments like communication wise and whatnot. I still think these are both good transits as far as Mars might give you a little extra fuel to create, um, to feel into your intuition, um, you know, whatnot. Um, so then on April 10th, Mars is going to conjunct Saturn at 14 degrees. Pisces 14 is about the middle point of, um, Pisces. And these are known as the two malefics in astrology. Um, they're both kind of malicious and kind of, you know, Mars has got that warrior energy going on. Saturn's got that be disciplined, be responsible, check yourself, karmic energy going on. Them being in a water sign, um, there could be some things going on with the oceans um, but there also could be some things going on with you being disciplined with your regular practices, whatever that looks like, your artwork, your spiritual practices, you know, being responsible, tuning into your intuition and trusting yourself and things like that. Um, so that'll be around the 10th of April, right after the great American eclipse on the 8th, on April 28th. Mars will conjunct Neptune in Pisces at 28 degrees. This could be a tough one. Um, Neptune is rules spirits. It rules media. It rules water and oceans. Um, it's home in Pisces and Mars is a warrior malefic, um, bringing its warrior energy. I mean, there could be some media shenanigans. There could be I don't, who knows? I mean, but personally, this could be like a, um, almost like a push pull energy. Like you want to tune into your intuition, but I don't know. You may, I don't know. It kind of depends on how this shows up in your natal chart. 
um, how this one will present itself, but this, this is a notable transit. Um, on April 3rd, Venus is going to conjunct Neptune at 28 degrees Pisces. This is a creative artistic transit. It's a fun, it could be a fun trip if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but it could also be like almost like, um, illusions of good fortune that don't work out. Like it's, it's, um, what is it like the low, low hanging fruit or it's gold on the outside smells like shit on the inside kind of thing. Um, kind of that's cause Venus is, you know, relationships, it's love, it's romance, it's money. Neptune is illusions and deceptions. Um, and so, yeah, that could be, that could be an interesting one. That's also going to be right ahead of a darkening moon, um, in Pisces right before the solar eclipse. So that whole week could be interesting. Um, April 4th through the 29th, Venus will be in Aries. Venus in Aries is feisty. She knows what she wants and she going to say it. She going to go after it. She going to put on her warrior, her Xeno warrior princess gear and and go after it so now we're gonna have venus in aries mercury in aries along with the north node along with chiron along with the sun so um you know once we get venus in there you know that could be when people break up that could be when people quit their job that could be when people relocate um, that could be when people choose like you know what i want my freaking happiness and this life i'm living is bullshit um, and so, you know, you could see some interesting, abrupt changes in people's lives around the 4th through the 29th of April. 420, weed day. Smoke it if you got it. Uh, Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus. This is a huge transit. Um, this is Jupiter magnifies it amplifies it expands um what not get it out of your head that this is a santa claus planet it's not it rewards when you do the work but it's not santa claus bringing you a present list until you do your work um so it really does have a naughty and nice list um but jupiter does amplify it puts a magnifying glass on things conjunct uranus Uranus is Aquarius. It's disruptive. It's rebellious. It's also freedom. Um, it's also, you know, it can create chaos and create, you know, potential injury if you're not being extra cautious. So, um, and then they're both in an earth sign. So could be some quakes, could be, um, who knows? Um, and then I want to go back up here. When does... It's happening between Mars conjunct Saturn and Mars conjunct um, Neptune in Pisces. And we've just had that solar eclipse on the 8th. This is kind of the what makes April a big giant month of change. Because this could be a seriously change disruptive. But it, it's, it, it could be a good thing, right? Like if you've been waiting for an opportunity to plop into your lap and you've been doing the work to tell the universe this is what you want, like this, this t April 20th could be the date, right? Or somewhere around there, right? Because we got to remember astrology works in, you know, like waves. So it could be the energy leading up to or the energy even after the fact. Um, so that's the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. We'll get more into this and we'll know more about maybe where this conjunction is going to affect things after the eclipse, I feel like, um, and see what kind of comes surfacing after that eclipse on the 8th. Uh, May 3rd, um, Neptune moves to 29 degrees, the final degree of Pisces. Um, he will not move into Aries this year. Um, I think he dips his toes in next year in 2025, but anytime an outer planet gets into a final degree of a sign, it's significant. So it's kind of worth thinking about 29 degrees is the most mature degree of a sign. Um, and so 
fun things can happen there. On May 2nd, we have Pluto stationing retrograde. This is an annual thing, but the, the date is kind of important to pay attention to like what happens in the world or what happens in your life when the outer planets station besides Pluto stationing retrograde on May 2nd and Mercury having its retrograde from the 1st through the 25th, all planets remain direct until June 30th. So that's why things feel rapid fire. Now we're going to move into an air, uh, uh, now we're in a fire sign that's just going to, you know, rapid things up, speed things up even more. So anyway, that's the transits for now. Alrighty, let's look at this chart and the stuff right behind this um, full worm moon. It's happening at five degrees of Libra with the sun at five degrees of Aries. It's called a penumbral which is P-E-N-U-M-B-R-A-L, a a penumbral eclipse, meaning we just kind of get like a shadow on the moon, just a little sliver of a shadow. But because it's like it's a shadow, thus it is surfacing the shadow within us, right? And as I said before, it's all about seeing your shadow, acknowledging your shadow, um, potentially loving it, forgiving it, um, honoring it, all of the things um, to do with your shadow. Um, We're also, of course, dealing with relationships in any capacity, friendships, partnerships, business, your colleagues, your relationship to inanimate objects, your relationship with spirituality or your higher power or even your higher self and your spirit guides, your relationship with anything right? Your relationship with money, um, and finances, uh, and whatnot. Um, it's called the worm moon. Worms like to burrow underground. Uh, and then, um, remember that big endings bring big beginnings. So if we take a look at the chart, we can see that we have the moon in Libra at the top, like at 12 o'clock ish. And then if we come to the bottom of the chart, you can see all these planets piled up in Pisces, all these planets piled up in Aries. And then of course we have, um, Jupiter, Uranus moving in on each other in Taurus and poor Pluto left over here in Aquarius by himself, (laughs) but that's okay. He's still, he's still making noise over there. Um, you can see Mars getting inching closer to Saturn. You know, they'll conjunct two days after this eclipse occurs. Um, this headphones looking thing is the North Node. Um, so eclipses occur when the sun and the moon either conjunct or oppose each other within 18 degrees of the nodes. So the North Node is shaped like headphones. The south node is up here in Libra and it looks like upside down headphones, okay? So you can see they're at 15 degrees, the moon is at five, the sun's at five. So they're 10 degrees apart. Um, And so that's what we're dealing with there. You can see Chiron over here. Mercury is still direct. He'll be direct until the first. You can see... Um, Uranus is the blue one and then Jupiter is the little, um, white gray one over here in Taurus. They're moving in on each other. They'll be together on the 20th. So you can see where, and as, uh, where is she? Venus, this one here that looks like a mirror and then Mars over here. Of course they are the masculine and feminine, um, uh, glyphs as well. Um, when they get closer into Aries, then we will have, so by the time we get to Taurus, we'll get to have that planet pile up happening in Aries. So Aries is fire. It's warrior energy. It's 
direct energy. Pisces is more dreamy. It's more spiritual. It's intuitive um, and all of those things. So when we have this amount of energy piled up in the final sign of the zodiac and in the initial sign of the zodiac, something big is ending and something new is beginning. Now, of course, we have spring, seeds are planted, but these seeds were planted. I've talked about the rose analogy before, like the no, the rose buried under the snow um, that in the springtime, you know, blooms. It's the same thing with us energetically, right? So if you have felt sluggish, if you have felt unmotivated, that is okay. You're being prepared for some massive launch as this airy season progresses. So be patient, allow the slowdown, because I promise in maybe like a month or so, <laughs> you're going to want that slowdown back. You're going to be like, holy shit, um, sort of thing. And then certainly as we get more into May, we're going to see Jupiter move into um, Gemini. So that's going to that's gonna speed things up even more. Um, so anyway, the good news is, I mean, we've had some minor, um, transits, harmonious transits happening, but because all the planets are, are cl clumped together, we haven't had quite a lot of squares to deal with, which is good. Squares are a tougher energy to work with. Um, so we've had more of these harmonious transits, um, to deal with, which is good. It's allowing us to heal, but it's allowing us to heal some really deep parts of ourselves. Like the worm burrowing through the underground, we're healing some deep, hidden, you know, unseen parts of ourselves. So keep that in mind as we move through this eclipse. This feels like some very heavy energy. Um, you can also think back to maybe what surfaced for you in mid-October of 2023. We had a Libra solar eclipse at that time. Um, and that may have surfaced some stuff for you that this is now kind of maybe bring to completion if you're ready to complete it. And so um, highly recommend journaling, highly recommend a ritual or a practice to move energy through you if you're feeling like you need to cry um, maybe throw a temper tantrum all of those are good so that is the chart for this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra all righty let's take a look at the lunations or the moon cycle um, for this next stretch of time of course, you can catch the moon astrology tarot videos here on my YouTube. Um, I post a video every time the moon changes signs. So you can get more in-depth information there. Um, so after this full moon on the 25th, we will then have the third quarter square moon um, at 12 degrees of Capricorn. That's also the same date that Mer Mercury stations retrograde. Um, so if you're somebody who thrives when Mercury stations, happy April Fool's Day. I'm not fooling. Mercury really does station retrograde on the day of the third quarter moon square. Um, so, but that does not mean you can't thrive. I'm not really a huge fan of April Fool's Day anyway. I've tried to pull April Fool's Day pranks and I usually fail miserably. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so hopefully nobody pulls some pranks that day, but you know, they will. That you, you just know that they will. But this third quarter moon square in Capricorn, I mean, the moon, moon's at detriment in Capricorn. It doesn't do as well emotionally. Um, and so this really could kind of, you know, I always call it the get shit done moon because it's the, it's the day when your emotions are the least potent. Um, and so it's usually an opportunity to like crank out a lot of shit and get a lot of stuff done. However, watch that communication around that Mercury retrograde. So, you know, could maybe not be the, may not be the day to make all the phone calls, but um, you never know. So, um, you know, or have all of your text prepared in advance um, so that on the date, on the first, you can, you know, go ahead and make the phone calls. But anywho. Um, on the sixth, we have that balsamic darkening moon in Pisces. I feel like this one's going to be heavy as hell. 
um, because it's leading into that eclipse. Uh, there was what, what happened on the third, was it Venus conjunct Neptune? And then Venus is going to move into Aries on the fourth. And then we're going to have a darkening balsamic moon in Pisces, um, ahead of a solar eclipse. So again, Pisces with Mars there, Venus will just finish there. Hydrate, take good care of yourself. If you're feeling extra fatigued, extra tired, rest, let your body rest. Um, could be, could very well be the literal calm before the storm. Okay. Just, just saying. Um, and then of course on April 8th, we have that new moon solar eclipse. This is at 19 degrees of Aries. It's conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer or the teacher. Um, and so healing opportunities, letting go forgiveness, um, forgiving yourself for past past versions of yourself um you would want to know where where 19 aries is in your chart um and obviously i'll do videos around that but um so that's on april 8th uh this is great american i I didn't well it's because this is not the uh solar eclipse this is a lunar eclipse video um but i'll do a video for this and i'll show the map again um and, and all of that. The eclipse that we're having this time in Libra is not visible in the United States. So um, the 15th, we have the first quarter square moon in Cancer, 26 Cancer. Um, cancer is the moon's home. It's a water sign. Um, you know, so we could be kind of swimmy that day, emotional that day. Um, maybe you've made a decision on April, around April 8th. Uh, that now you're kind of emotional about on the 15th. Of course, that's also tax day in the United States, so maybe you got some emotion around your taxes. <laughs> um, April 23rd, we have the full moon at four degrees of Scorpio. Um, Y'all know if you've been around for a hot minute, I love Scorpio moons with all my heart and soul. Uh, <laughs> being a little sarcastic there. Um, because Scorpio moons tend to be very difficult for me, um, cause I have a Scorpio moon. Uh, so yeah, no, but it's okay. They are what they are, right? What they're here for, right? Scorpio is transformative energy. It's therefore very, very thick to deal with. So again, we're not out of the woods by any stretch. This year is going to continue to press forward quickly because we have all planets direct, um, you know, like I said, besides Mercury and Pluto, all planets direct until the end of June. So things are going to continue to be rapid fire, changing quickly, all of the things. So that's the lunation cycle for now. All right, and my announcements and gratitudes, of course. Um, hopefully you guys have been able to catch the Admiral Sarah Chronicles, which is my new video series where I am just shooting the shit about science nonfiction uh, and astrology, emotional intelligence, humanity, deconditioning, um, all of the things. I'm just picking random episodes. Actually, I have a list, but I'm picking them at random. Um, from currently Star Trek, um, various series of Star Trek, Next Gen and Voyager, which happen to be my two favorites. Um, I do plan on going down some other um, genre or I should say like universe rabbit holes, which is why the title changed to Admiral Sarah Chronicles, because if it was Trekkie astrology, then I'd just be able to do Trek. But I really want to do um, Transformers and some other fun stuff. Um, so if you're into sci-fi or science nonfiction or science faction, however you'd like to look at that, um, basically it's my whole idea that science fiction is actually science nonfiction. Um, and so I did decided to do a video series about it. Why not? Cause it's my YouTube channel. You can have fun. Um, but it's, you know, me just shooting the shit about it. All right. And then we've got the Zodiac tea tasting. Um, I basically found a whole bunch of Zodiac teas on a couple of different online shops, bought them, going to do videos about them. So we'll of course do an Aries tea video. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, 
as of this recording, um, I have the Aries tea from one company. I am waiting for the shipment for the tea from the other company. Um, but hopefully by tour season, I will have everything worked out. And if I do two separate videos per season, that's okay too. Um, this one I will be doing on both YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of the things. I am over on TikTok. I have been feeling through how to do TikToking. Um, what I want to do with it and whatnot. And so I just, I just keep maxing out on time and space to get, you know, do the video editing and things like that. But I am over there if you want to follow me there, but the Zodiac T videos will be here on YouTube, will be on all the other platforms as well. So hopefully those are some fun, lighten the, lighten the weight of this craziness that we live in <laughs> kind of, kind of content. Um, just me having a little playful fun. Um, you know, but still talking about emotional intelligence and astrology and, and transformation work and deconditioning and deprogramming humanity. And that's just, this, 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 this is the shit for me. <laughs> um, of course you can book a reading with me. Um, if you want to contact me directly, that's fine. If you've got the means to do so, most of you probably don't. Um, but I do offer basic personal readings, uh, have been doing some eclipse readings. Um, so if you're interested in that, drop me a comment and let me know if you're interested in the eclipse readings, we can make that happen. Um, you can, of course, in the links below, you can listen to my guest appearance on the Hearts Unleashed podcast with Abigail Gazda, where I talk about breaking up with your victimhood. Honestly, like that's the way out of this mess of the world we're living in is to don't be a victim to it. Um, I mean, don't be a victim to it. Pull up your bootstraps, do your own shit, have fun doing it, um, love it, have your passions going, um, because that's that's how we get out of this crap is we stop being a victim to the crap because it is crap, right? <laughs> like anyway, um, you can of course join me over on the awakening spirit collective. I do offer, um, Zodiac season overviews over there. I'm also able to kind of dive in a little deeper because it's not, um, that I don't have the risk of flagging and censorship and all that crap. So if you really want to de decondition and deprogram, um, you can go join, join us over there. It's me and a whole bunch of other, um, soul partners, um, spiritual practitioners, uh, Reiki workers, Ascension coaches, support people, um, and whatnot. But I offer Zodiac season overviews and I have been doing some, um, some teaching of astrology type videos, kind of helping people understand aspects, planets and things like that. And of course, thank you all so very much for being here. I so appreciate you. I love building this channel. Um, I'm kind of loving stepping into my playful era of life. Um, you know, I tend to take life way too seriously. Uh, and so that, you know, stepping into doing more of the sci-fi stuff, the tea stuff, the artistic stuff, like just having some creative fun doing what I do. Um, you know, cause we're in crazy ass times. No, jo no joke, no doubt. Things are crazy. It's okay. We're here for the ride. Like, right. We signed up for this human journey. Um, but we are here and I appreciate you for being here on my channel. Um, and just having fun hanging out with me and, and, you know, I love getting a random text like, Hey, I saw your video and blah, 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 <laughs> you know? Um, but also feel free to drop a comment. It does help the algorithm please hit the like button. Um, please share with others who you think might appreciate this content. Um, you know, whatnot, maybe you know some other Trekkies out there, um, that would love to hear me talk about Trek and how it relates to astrology and all of the things. So anyway, thank you so much. And let's move on to your sun signs and, uh, yeah. All right. Welcome to the sun signs portion of this lunar li Libra lunar, uh, say that five times fast, Libra lunar eclipse video. Um, let's just dive right in with Aries. Aries, this lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your seventh house of relationships. Now, while we are in Aries season and this eclipse is happening in Libra, there's a concentrated amount of energy in Pisces, which is your 12th house. So there, there's a lot here around, um, 
relationships, but there's also a lot here around like karmic endings, um, spirituality, uh, that sort of thing. So you could be like experiencing relationships that were like maybe a karmic lesson that's ending. There could also be, um, you know, your relationship with your, with your spirituality, um, being heightened or wanting to express itself a bit more, or you wanting to be more spiritual. Um, there's also a part of this that could be about hidden enemies, like who you're in relationship with that, you know, keep your, your friends closer, your enemies close, your friends close, your enemies closer. Um, and so you may have some people in your world who may be, you know, you thought were friends, but they're actually your enemies. Um, I do want to say though, that like heading into April, I feel like for Aries, like with the mercury retrograde, uh, and the the solar eclipse that we're going to have on April 8th, I feel like this is a moment in time to really take your time because Aries, you can be a little bit like, you know, uh, uh, quick on the trigger um, and you may want to be conscious or cautious of doing so um, just to like not, you know, make a decision too hastily, too rambunctiously that uh, you end up not liking it on the other side of the Mercury retrograde, which doesn't end until the end of April. Um, however, this is a lunar eclipse to really focus on relationships, who's in your corner, who's not in your corner, um, who's really showing up for you in the way that you need them to or want them to. Um, we got the Believe in Your Own Magic deck for this lunar eclipse. And you got Feast, which is um, slow down and celebrate yourself. And I think there is an aspect of this. This is about yourself where, you know, seeing what all you have accomplished, um, you know, where, all, where all have you been and, you know, just being kind of introspective and in, in self celebration, um, as we move through this lunar eclipse. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a really exciting time for Aries, but it is going to be a lot of energy, um, because what's in Pisces will eventually move into Aries. Um, and so I think there's just, there's good energy, but it's also an opportunity to kind of be conscious of what you're up to. That's what I got for Aries. All right, Taurus, this lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your sixth house which is daily routines, health habits, is also pets and being of service. Um, so that's where the eclipse is. However, you have a lot of energy also in your 11th house, which is Pisces. Um, and then of course the um, upcoming Mercury retrograde will be in your 12th house. So I feel like there could be some like spiritual changes happening for you, maybe even a religious change or, or at least a switch in churches. Um, or maybe you're discovering that the people who you thought were spiritual aren't at, aren't that spiritual. Maybe they're, they're, you know, not keeping up with their spiritual practices. Um, and so like daily routines, like maybe you're going to up the ante on your spiritual practices. Um, maybe you're going to become a servant of spirituality or practitioner of spirituality um, or whatnot. And I think there's some stuff to let go of um, with regards to how you view spirituality. Um, or maybe there's some stuff to let go of with regards to who you associate with. Um, and whatnot. Now, again, Mercury is going to go retrograde the 1st of April. So it's going to be like a, um, in your 12th house. And I, I, I think there's going to be, um, again, it's, it's kind of one of those, like, don't shoot from the hip, but like, or don't be too quick on the trigger. Um, but at the same time, like critically think about where you are going with your spirituality, with your relationships of that sort and also, again, it's back to that daily practices, daily routines of like, um, you know, are you meditating when you want to, when you need to, are you journaling, are you spending time learning um, in your own like growth um, and whatnot? And is it serving your highest good 
in whatever capacity that may be showing up. Um, get the believe in your own magic deck. And for Taurus, we got feather. Um, think first before you judge. Oh, yeah, I like this because it's kind of like a, um, maybe you feel like you're a bit caught between two worlds, um, religion versus spirituality, since we're talking about Pisces in the 11th house. Um, and Mercury retrograde in your 12th house, and maybe even the whole being of service part with the eclipse being in your sixth house. Um, I think like, you know, you could be caught between um, who maybe who's right and who's wrong. Um, you know, and Libra is about ju justice. And so maybe it's like not your responsibility to, to be judge and jury of any one group or person or whatever. Um, but bringing, bringing that, uh, Torin, Taurus, Torsion, Torin, <laughs> um, earth to the mix and actually like maybe even, I don't know, where am I, why am I thinking like being like the balance between two groups or something? Like, is there some sort of like mediation um, between something, if indeed you're choosing between, or maybe you don't want to choose between, you just want to be with both groups. And that's completely fine too. I think, I mean, there you go. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting for Taurus. Gemini sun and rising this lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your fifth house which is creativity, it's childlike playfulness, could be inner child uh, wounds, um, and those sorts of things. The bulk of the energy is in Pisces, which is your 10th house of career, um, also public achievement. Uh, and then, of course, the upcoming Mercury retrograde will be in your 11th house of groups, communities, um, and technology. And I think a combination of all of those is sort of indicative of um, being creative, maybe being a little playful, um, certainly something to the effect of your long term career goals. Um, maybe you haven't been like creative enough in your work and you want to be more creative, more playful. And so maybe there's something to be released or seen about like not judging your own creativity and embracing that while your creativity may be a bit messy or a bit dirty, not dirty, not dirty in like the, <laughs> well, I could go a few ways. Maybe it is. I'm just going to leave it. Um, but that it's, it's okay. And that it's fun. And as long, and, and you know, for, if it's fun for you, then maybe it's time to like embrace that a little bit, um, and be with that, uh, as far as like mercury retrograde in your 11th house, I feel like that could be about like, maybe you're reestablishing your feel for technology, maybe even social media, um, could be a part of that. Uh, and that could lead to a whole new career. Maybe you are switching from an in-person job to a virtual job or a side hustle um, that allows you to express your creativity a bit more because your day job or your, you know, your, your, um, your we'll go with day job is not as expressive or as playful as you would like it to be and to really embrace that inner child um, and to allow that inner child its space and time to heal you take on like you know some kind of a social media gig you know whatever that is right so could be really fun for gemini let's see what we got in the believe in your own magic for gemini um this is a voyage. Um, you already have all of the answers. Yeah, I feel like 
I mean, Gemini has been going through some transformations for years, um, you know, shifting um, after you had the North Node there. Um, what was that like three years ago? And then you had like the Mars retrograde, uh, 2020, end of 2022 into 2023. Um, I feel like some, some stuff may be opening up, but you have to like trust that you already know trust that you, um, that it's opening up, that the path is opening up for you. Um, and you've got, you know, Jupiter heading into your sign later this year or later this spring, rather, um, that, you know, it, it could just swing the door just wide open. And I think it's a matter of just trusting the process, um, and being prepared and knowing, like trusting within yourself that you got it figured out or that it's already there and you, there's nothing to figure out. That's a better way to word it. That's what I got for Gemini. All right, Cancer. Cancer, this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your fourth house, um, which is a cancer Cancerian house. It's emotional intelligence, home foundation, maternal things. Um, however, the bulk of the energy is in your ninth house, which is long distance travel, broadening your education, broadening your horizons, um, whatnot. And then of course the upcoming Mercury retrograde is going to be in your 10th house, which is career and public achievement. I <laughs> our cancer is about to move. Um, and maybe it's like relocating that will not only be supportive of your work or the advancement of your work, but also supportive of perhaps a maternal relationship, whether that is you're a mom and it's going to bring you back home to your children, um, your, maybe your adult children. Um, maybe you are moving, maybe you're an adult child and you're moving to be nearer your mom, but it's also going to advance your career. Maybe you're going to, you know, move out of the country in order to, um, in order to, advance your career uh or something like that perhaps a professor position in a in a new university I don't know um and so I feel like with with this it's like having that foundation something's loose about it something is out of balance about it um and it's it's something that you've got to make a change to in order to um, or release something around your foundation, your home life, um, your emotional intelligence in order to uh, advance your career or in order to take on the new education venture, um, whatever that, however that's showing up for you. Um, still could be long distance travel. Who knows? Maybe some cancers are going to cross the pond. Um, and you got the lighthouse which is, um, don't doubt your worth. Oh, hell yeah. You know, if you're questioning this or you're, you're wondering if this is, um, I say, take the damn chance. It's 2024. We've all been through some crazy in the last like four or five years, like take the damn chance cancers. Um, if you really want to establish yourself and really, um, broaden yourself and, and reach those next level horizons, like I really feel like that's what this could be for you is like this opportunity is present and, you know, take the damn leap, take the damn leap. Um, so yeah, that's what I got for cancer. All right, Leo, this lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your third house. Uh, this is about communication this is about siblings potentially or at least you know like close people in your world of course it's relationships maybe it's your relationship to how you communicate um, of course the bulk of the energy in pisces is your eighth house um, and then the mercury upcoming mercury retrograde in your ninth house uh so it's kind of like a rethink how you because mercury retrograde is going to encourage us to kind of critically think so if that's in your ninth house of long distance travel and broadening your horizons um and then the third house maybe it's like you know rethinking how you communicate with your siblings um rethinking 
traveling somewhere, but also that Pisces in the eighth house could be very intuitive. It could be very like transformative um, and really could have you rethinking like a financial agreement or an intimate agreement, uh, something like that. So, um, and I think like with what Leo has been through a, a lately about self-worth, uh, and whatnot, and you've got Pluto in opposition at this point. Um, I think as, as Leo's continue to reevaluate their, how they are about their value and their worth, I think it's going to change the tra trajectory of how they, I mean, interact with the world, but how they communicate, how they express themselves, how they, um, um, how they have intimacy and how they deal with finances. Like there's a lot of components here. However, I think this is just really goes back to, you know, re-evaluating, re renegotiating your own self-worth. And are you worthy of better than what you've had but to have the better you got to release the the current situation um or at least release your own limitations around the current situation um and leo's you got uh red which is forgive Oh my goodness. Okay. So this is kind of about self-forgiveness. I feel like with Leo's in their current situation, um, I feel like this is really encouraging you to forgive yourself for what you have done, you know, forgive yourself for whatever it is that you maybe put yourself through. Perhaps you, um, you know, led a pretty self-destructive life at some point or, you know, in whatever capacity that doesn't have to mean a drug or an alcohol situation. Maybe you were self-destructive in, you know, eating, not exercising, just simply not taking care of yourself and whatever pattern that showed up. And I think there's a level of self-forgiveness that's going to, when you let that go, when you forgive yourself and comfort that part of your inner child or that part of your wounded self, you can step into this next level of self-worth um, that's available for you with that, uh, the, not only the Piscean energies, but with the Pluto opposition energies. So that's like that for Leo. All right, Virgo, Virgo, this, uh, full moon lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your second house, which is self-worth value finances, um, and whatnot. However, your big bulk of energy is in your opposing seventh house of Pisces. Um, so it's all about relationships. It's all about who you're associating with. And to boot, you've got uh, Mercury about to go retrograde in your eighth house, which is um, intimate relationships, financial relationships, uh, whatnot. Um, so there's a heavy, hefty influence here of who you're in relationship with, whether it's a, you know, friendship, partnership, uh, intimate lover, um, or who you're in financial partnership with. So maybe a business partner, uh, or an investor or something like that, or maybe we're dealing with an inheritance here too, um, with that eighth house. And so it's kind of like, a um, your, your, your worth and your value, according to you in relationships, in whatever capacity that means for you, um, are your relationships giving you the, <laughs> giving you the ass kicking that you need to be disciplined, to, to do with life, what you want to do with it. Virgos, you got a tough road because you got Saturn and Neptune in opposition in Pisces. And so, you know, we all are kind of going through this, um, being disciplined with Saturn and Pisces, but you are the unique one because you've got a sun or a rising. Maybe you've got a Saturn opposition. Maybe you've got a North node opposition to this Piscean energy. 
Um, and so it's really kind of like, you got to show up and be the disciplined one to, um, you know, quietly kiss some people goodbye or quietly embrace the worth of yourself. But there's also like a part that's, you know, seeing that, you know, even if you have shortcomings and by your definition, because we all know you're the, you're critical and probably more critical of yourself than anyone else. Um, but can you be okay with whatever that is for you? Um, and yet love that part of you and then therefore give better love to those around you. Uh, what's the, what's the saying? One can only love others to the capacity that they can love themselves. So if you're struggling with other people in relationships, it's, it's a matter of looking at yourself and seeing where that self-love and that value and that self-worth lies for yourself. So that's a pretty deep one for Virgo, but Virgos are going through it. Like I have all kinds of sympathy for Virgo to have um, Saturn in opposition. Um, that's a tough, tough little road. Um, and you're in that for the next till like 2026, early 2026. So it doesn't, you know, it ain't going to get easier, <laughs> unfortunately. So it's, it's a matter of staying disciplined um, in, in the flux of all of it. Um, you got the flower card. Um, oh, be honest with yourself. Well, I can't make this shit up. <laughs> so think about a flower. I don't even know what flower is on here. Let me see. I guess it really doesn't matter what flower is on here. Oh, it's a flower girl. Um, not a flower girl is in a wedding, but like a girl surrounded in a flower garden, orchard. I don't know. I don't do plants very well. Um, but I think this is important because think about a flower. Flowers bloom. They are uniquely colored. Um, you know, you like, you know, you can have different, you know, they come in every color of the rainbow. You come in every color of the rainbow, right? Like, be honest with yourself. You're okay. You're doing fine. And even if it seems like the energy is thick as molasses in January, you've got what it takes to get through this. However, let yourself go on the whole being critical. It's okay if you're not perfect. It's okay if you can't do everything pristine, right? Um, it what what you know, there is like a level of like, being okay with not everything being exact, however, being able to at least execute pro ex execute projects or being disciplined enough to get through um, your goals and whatnot. So you got Mercury going retrograde in your what? What did I say? Eighth house. Yeah. So re renegotiations there. Okay. So I already covered that. All right. So <laughs> that's what I got for Virgo. All right, Libra, Libra this full moon, lunar eclipse in Libra is in your first house. This is all about you, how you are in relationships, how you are to yourself. Really. It's about yourself. Um, it's really about how you treat yourself, how you interact with yourself. Um, what part of yourself are you unwilling to see? What part of yourself are you unwilling to acknowledge? Um, but also, you know, keep in mind that uh, the bulk of the energy is in your sixth house, Pisces. Um, and, you know, that's daily routines, that's um, health habits and whatnot. And I kind of wonder like what part of Libran's sacrifice themselves or like let themselves go um to you know for friendships for relationships for whatever um and then of course you're going to have this upcoming mercury retrograde in your seventh house which is partnerships relationships um and you know that can be really an opportunity to be to really see how you show up at you know who do you kind do you, are you one of those people who um conforms to whatever group you're around or at least attempts to but you're like hiding so much of yourself because you're so afraid to be yourself 
with everyone else, like so that you can be the person that you think everybody else wants you to be. Like that would be the typical people pleasing Libra. Um, is you know sacrificing a part of themselves for everyone else and now you're kind of going to run into this mercury retrograde and it's going to have you really think about that um, and really reevaluate if you know you're with the right people or you're showing up as what would happen if you showed up as yourself to people to your friendships to your your you know partner um and whatnot um and then of course the sixth house health routines um, work habits. Uh, I think I said that backwards, but it doesn't matter. It's the same words synonymously. Um, but it's also like being of service and, you know, who, who, or what are you, um, serving maybe even to yourself. Um, and also of course, time management is a part of this with Libra, uh, or with this Piscean energy. Um, and it really could be like a critical time for you to, uh, reflect on your routine. Do you have one? Um, are you able to maintain one and are you able to maintain it even when, you know, Joe Schmo calls and wants you to go out partying, but you got to work out the next day and you don't want to feel like shit. Um, you know, or, you know, are you willing to maintain the routines for yourself because you know, that's within your best interest or do you sacrifice your own routines for other people. Um, this could be a really interesting lunar eclipse for a lot of Librans um, because they kind of have to see this dark, icky side of them. And Librans usually like to see the beauty and everything, um, but they kind of got to face the shadow part of themselves. Uh, Y'all got the tree. Um, and this is let them go. Yeah. So it's like kind of like what I said about like, uh, are you afraid to show the shadow side or the, uh, the not so beautiful part of yourself to people because you're afraid of like them leaving and it's okay. Like, okay, let them go, let them go. Um, and you know, and if this is not something that you wanted, if you don't want people to go, like maybe it's a, you know, clearing some of that shadow, um, and, and healing those parts of you, you know, to be in that better space. Um, but yeah, I think if people are letting go, it's creating space for new people to come in that can be with the every authentic part of you, every dark side of you, every pretty side of you, um, all of the things. So um, yeah, so that's what I got for Libra. All right, Scorpio, this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your 12th house of uh, karmic endings, spirituality, whatnot. Um, the bulk of the energy is in your fifth house in Pisces, which is um, childlike playfulness, heart-centeredness, creativity, um, but also could be like inner child wounds. Um, and then of course the Mercury retrograde, upcoming Mercury retrograde will be in your sixth house, daily routines, health habits, and whatnot. Um, you may be really saying screw it to a lot of stuff because it's getting in the way of you having the, you know, healthy life that you want. It's getting in the way of you having a creative life that you want um, and or a spiritual connection that you're looking for. Um, you know, and Scorpios have a good potential for, you know, new relationships, having been through the South Node and Scorpio last year um, and the year before that. Um, so I really feel like with Scorpio, it's you, you know, and the we had that solar eclipse in October uh, in your 12th house as well. And so, you know, whatever came up for you then may be resurfacing now. And that goes for any of the signs. Um, but um, I think with Scorpio, it's like, you know, they're stepping into a new level of kind of playfulness and the Mercury retrograde um, in the sixth house is like re-evaluating the daily routines and whatnot um, and really in, you know, kind of solidifying what that looks like to have those routines that actually support the, the goals that you have that allow you, you know, 
that allow you that. And maybe there's some creativity or childlike like playfulness around like workouts. Maybe it's even like embracing a workout or embracing a nutrition plan that actually allows you to play. Maybe you're going to, you know, playing with your food, like maybe you're going to do more sushi or more finger foods rather than, you know, fork and knife kind of food. Um, but there's, there's definitely some spiritual gain here. There also could be some, you know, with that being said, there could be some sort of multi-sensory <laughs> experience Scorpios are looking for, um, you know, with, with that, um, that could be interesting, uh, with all that Pisces energy and Mars is going to be there and that's your ruler. Um, and so, you know, I don't know that multi-sensory thing just kind of came up. Um, Scorpios, you got the villain. <laughs> um, you can always rewrite the story. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you can always rewrite the story. So Scorpios, you don't always have to be the dark demon, which I don't believe Scorpios are right. Like I'm a Scorpio moon and rising. I don't think I'm a dark demon. Okay. People want to make me the dark demon, but I'm not the dark demon. Um, but I do think this is like, you can rewrite the story. You get to choose how it goes all the time, right? You get to wake up every day, make choices, uh, you know, to, to move your life in a different direction. And I think like, you know, there could be like you letting go of a commitment because it doesn't align with you fulfilling other things that you want to be doing, right? Maybe it's a tough decision that you've got to let go of, but you've got to like be able, you know, be willing to let that go right? In order to, you know, get fit, in order to eat healthy, in order to go get your nails done or your hair done, or, you know, do the feel good things, but also like the deep, healthy things, right? Whether, whatever that looks like for you, maybe you need to learn and educate yourself. But I think like tapping into your spirituality, tapping into um, your higher power, however you view that and really embracing that and challenging yourself to um, see what tapping into your spirituality can bring for you in your health and daily routines. I think I, I mentioned this somewhere, something about like intuitive eating, um, you know, like being able to nour nourish yourself with intuitive eating, um, wherein, you know, if you're craving green le leafy greens, like that's what you eat. Um, if you're craving fruit or berries, like that's what you eat because your body wants it. And like, I don't know, maybe there is something about like, you know, Scorpios are highly intuitive anyway, and they feel things in their body anyway. But I think with this full moon, it, full moon, it's definitely, you know, if we're rewriting the story, maybe it's that opportunity for Scorpios to really dig into what their body is actually feeling when it's feeling it and responding accordingly. Hmm, this could be good for some Scorpios. Okay. <laughs> Sagittarius, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 11th house. Of course, the bulk of the energy in Pisces is in your fourth house, a foundation, family, uh, foundation, maternal things, and emotional intelligence. And Mercury, the upcoming Mercury retrograde will be in your fifth house. So, some interesting dynamic here around your relationship with um, groups, communities, technology. Of course, Pluto in rec Pl Pluto in retro <laughs> Pluto in Aquarius um, would be your third house. Third house, um, and you know there could be some creative things that you're like reevaluating with that fifth house Mercury retrograde. Um, but there's also like a um, embracing groups and communities, how you associate with them. Um, and then there is a deep re-evaluation of emotional intelligence of your foundation, your home life. Um, I feel like Sages are the ones moving right now just with all that. Um, because maybe wherever you are is not giving you the scenic vibe to create and so you're reevaluating your living situation. Um, maybe you are a mom dealing with kids. That would be fourth and fifth house as well. Um, and you know, maybe you're reestablishing your role in the in the um in the um what the heck? 
parents educate what the hell am I thinking of parent teacher organization I don't know um yeah I think you know where I'm going with that uh and you know maybe you're going to start a blog for moms who are homeschoolers I don't know that could be a fun one um but I definitely think there's something about like your home life, your emotional intelligence, reevaluating that. But it's also really looking at how you are in groups, communities, and technology. How do you embrace it? How do you use it? Um, you know, could be some social media things here for Sages. Um, could be legit moving. Could be relocation. Maybe you're moving home towards wherever you, you know, wherever your hometown is, um, you know, because it would, it might inspire your creativity. Um, so lots of things going on with Sages. Um, and you got Lavender. And this says, uh, surround yourself with love. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to with Sag. It's like, what do you love? What do you freaking love? What do you love in your home? What do you love to create? What do you love to do with technology? What do you love to do with groups of friends? Um, and, you know, are you in alignment with yourself so that you can actually do those things? Um, or are you just, you know, numbing out or staying can disconnected for sake of whatever? Um, but I think there's, you know, some, some re-evaluation to be had in all of this. But yes, I think Sag is, you know, surround yourself with love. You know, you've got that upwards pointing arrow. You can find, you know, bring in love, love yourself, all of the love things. Don't love bomb though. That's just rude. <laughs> all right. That's what I got for Sag. <laughs> Capricorn, sun and rising. This is your forecast for the Libra lunar eclipse, full moon Libra lunar eclipse. Um, so Libra is your 10th house, um, which is work, uh, long-term goals, public achievement, um, which, I mean, that's your definition, right? But also the bulk of the energy is in Pisces in your third house, which is communication, siblings, and whatnot. And of course, that upcoming Mercury retrograde is going to be in your fourth house, which is home, foundation, and that sort of thing. Um, and I think this is like finding balance in your work and finding a, um, relationships um, in your work. Um, and communicating, learning to communicate what you need maybe even from your job. Um, but also I feel like there could be some reevaluation of your home life situation or your foundation situation, excuse me, maybe even emotional intelligence, um, learning how to, to be with your emotions. You're kind of an earth sign and the moon is usual is, is at detriment in Capricorn. So you aren't typically the most emotional. However, I think there is like an opportunity to process your emotions, maybe how you feel about your job or your work or your long-term goals. And maybe it's like a re-evaluation of your long-term goals. Um, and so, you know, there's definitely uh, something there because um, of course, you know, you're going to be balancing that home and work situation. Um and for Capricorn, we got the throne. Well, you know, they can consider themselves the king of the mountain. <laughs> um, your potential is your potential is endless. <laughs> well, yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. But also I think like honoring your potential honoring that you do indeed have potential. Maybe this is a readjustment or realignment of your confidence um, without being arrogant, without being like self-righteous. Maybe this is just like reestablishing or like I said, realigning your confidence and your ability to achieve the things you want to achieve. Um, and, you know, really communicating that spiritually, communicating that with your higher power, with your spirit, with spirit guides um, and whatnot with all of that third house Piscean energy um, that we got going on, you know, that could be it for Capricorn. So that's what I got there. 
All right, Aquarius, this is for the full moon, lunar eclipse in Libra, which is your ninth house, broadening your horizons, um, long distance travel, uh, but you got all of that concentrated energy in your second house, which is about self-worth, um, value, money, um, and then the upcoming Mercury retrograde is going to be in your third house, which is communication um, and siblings and whatnot. Um, and of course, Pluto in your first This is a checkpoint for Aquarians because and I know I've mentioned this on multiple forecasts recently, but Aquarians are really stepping into a brand new era of how they um, present themselves to the world. Uh, and this could mean like, you know, relocate relocation, but I really think it's more about traveling and, um, and or broadening your horizons, um, education and those sorts of things like reevaluating your education, um, reevaluating how you're growing. Um, but I think like, because this is such a new era for Aquarius, Aquarians, um, it's who's going, who will support you, including yourself in going further um, and making the, creating the income, Pisces being your second house, creating the income to go there. Um, writing, I mean, Mercury retrograde in your third house could be about writing and maybe this will slow things down enough for you to, to write whatever it is you need to write, whether that's short stories or posts or, a uh, uh, you know, novel or whatever. Um, and maybe some Aquarius is going to write the next, uh, amazing novel or like, um, you know, universe as in like, you know, you know what I mean by universe, like game of, uh, song of ice and fire was a universe. Um, Stephen King has his own universe. You know what I mean? That's what I mean by universe. Like you're going to create this whole like scene of, or, you know, village of characters, um, and whatnot. And maybe this mercury retrograde slowdown in Aries is actually going to pump in all of that, uh, creativity to bring that about for you to write that. Um, and that would definitely broaden you, right? Like if you're not going to long distance travel particularly, but maybe you're going to like travel in your mind to another place of all of the, you know, aliens, all of the, you know, uh, all of the species from the Delta quadrant. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, or maybe it's like, you're going to create the next comic book thing or something like that. But I think like it's a matter of creating the income, having the knowing within yourself that you are worthy, Aquarius, of having the dream, having the fun, having the, the travel, having all of the things that you want to have. Um, and <laughs> you got the queen. Um, uh, you deserve you deserve sugar and <laughs> you deserve sugar, not salt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pisces second house for fucking real Aquarius. You deserve sugar, not salt, right? Have all of the, all of the sweet life that you want. This is your era. This is your time to shine, to step into your light, um, all of the things and, you know, use this time with all of this Piscean energy to feel through your worthiness, your value, create the money, create the, you know, to, to do all of the things that your little Aquarian heart desires. I love this so much for Aquarius because I'm really looking to see what Aquarius, including myself, I'm an Aquarius son, including myself, of what all we Aquarians are actually going to do to grid the fucking light on this planet in the nerdiest, geekiest, most fun, tabulous way possible. Okay. I just got overly excited about that, but queen and Aquarius really. Okay. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I hope you love it too. <laughs> all right, Pisces, this full moon eclipse, lunar eclipse in Libra is in your eighth house of intimate, uh, in, uh, of mergings, intimate and financial, 
Um, but the bulk of the energy is hanging out in your first house. So you're really having this massive self re-evaluation. Um, the Mercury retrograde in Aries is going to be in your second house. Um, and this, the I mean, y'all could be on the struggle bus for all I know out there. You could be on the struggle bus, Saturn in your first house, um, really having you reevaluate yourself. Um, yeah, we have, uh, you know, Mars will be here. Um, I'm trying to think if Venus is in Pisces yet. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think so, but either way, she's going to be there soon, regardless. Um, I think she is because the Mars or the Venus Saturn conjunction. Okay. Yeah. My bad. Um, so, you know, and then Neptune there, so this eclipse is really having you really think of, feel through that um, intimate financial situation, potentially with yourself. Um, and then the Mercury retrograde in your second house. Yeah, you could be questioning your worth and your value, your ability to make money, your ability to invest, your ability to uh, have intimate relationships. Um, and maybe this is just kind of like a, a, a personal inner transformation where you are able to embrace your maybe darker side, your more illusion illusory side your more delusion side and be okay with that you know shadowy part of yourself that's maybe not not so clear-minded some of the time and that that's okay um and then acknowledge that partnerships or um, intimate relationships would would need to accept that part of you um so you got the princess <laughs> she's the pisces princess um, you can be your own knight. And I say this all the freaking time because I'm a single chick, but you can be your own knight in shining armor that you don't need anybody. And maybe that's it for Pisces. Like maybe Pisces has been like desperately seeking a knight, but now they're like, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take on the battle myself <laughs> and, and do it that way. Um, and who knows, but I really, I mean, since I do have it that each of us is, um, you know, gets a partner in this life, I feel like there is a part of you that like needs to or wants to show your darker side and make sure that your partner, you know, whether it's your intimate partner, or your business partner, like understands that there's this darker side of you. And maybe the darker side of you is the knight, like the masculine feminine, the princess being the feminine, obviously. Um, but then there's like the knight that's like ready to fucking go to war. <laughs> you know, swords ready, right? That's what I got for Pisces. That's kind of funny. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this Libra Lunar Eclipse video um, and all of the things. I really appreciate your support on my channel. Please feel free to drop me a comment. Um, please feel free to like and share and all of the things. It really does help um, when you do just even click the like and let, let, let me and let YouTube know how much you love it. Um, you know, I hope you've been enjoying the um, uh, Admiral Sarah Chronicles. If you haven't yet checked that out, head on over to my channel and check out the Admiral Sarah Chronicles. Um, it's where I bring science nonfiction to uh, astrology, emotional intelligence, um, deconditioning and deprogramming of humanity, and all of those other fun topics that I love to talk about and uh, found finding a way to relate them to science nonfiction. Um, so basically it's science fiction, but I think science fiction is science nonfiction. How very Aquarius Scorpio of me, I know, but it's fun and I'm enjoying it and I hope you are too. I'm sending you a ton of love. We are, this is some thick ass energy, but you know, there's, there's ways through it. And honestly, we're doing something right. If they're fear mongering us the way that they are. Okay. Keep that in mind. I'll talk to you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.